moving on to uh, story two. Um, I just put out a, 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 a couple videos uh, this past Monday and the previous Monday talking about Israel. There's another one coming out next Monday. But in the meantime, there's always updates uh, at uh, America's uh, cousin imperialist. Imperialist cousin? How you guys get it? You guys get what I'm trying to say here. Um, they are uh, trying to annex a, uh, a a neighborhood in West Jeruz Jerusalem called Silvan. I, I, if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I super apologize. But um, yeah, this is a neighborhood in West Jerusalem. And they're trying to basically annex it out. Uh, so that they can bring bring more quote Jewish businesses in, and I think there was like a butcher shop that was pretty famous there that was uh, uh, demolished by these by these uh, colonizers. And there's no other. I mean, they're, they're, that's the only word that describes them. Um, by the way, this uh, this was one thing, you know, it's a long fucking show and, and I couldn't get into the details of every little thing that I had learned and been pissed off about <laughs> regarding Israel and Palestine. Um, but here's the thing. There are no Jewish businesses, right, in Israel. There are no Jewish businesses. Um, a lot of the businesses in Israel, Tel Aviv and all that, are actually multinational conglomerates. They're corporations. They don't actually have any sort of ties to Judaism. And neither do they have any ties literally to Israel because they are they're global companies. Um, they might have a headquarters in Israel, but that does not make them uh, Jewish by any means, considering that uh, Zionism and um, uh, Israelism. Sure, let's say that uh, is uh, is connected to being Jewish. It's just not. It's just not. Oh, unless. Uh, is it, maybe maybe I, I it's been a little while since I have uh, read the Torah or, or the Old Testament uh, by by which mean I haven't read it because uh, it's that's a, a very long book that I don't have time to read but I've heard some things about it uh, a lot of nice things some terrible things uh, I don't remember ethnic cleansing being a part of that though I mean there's a lot of smiting. Uh, boy, that fucking book does not hold back on the smiting. I'll tell you that, huh? If you're looking for a book where, you, where if you're like, hey, you know, I just read uh, a really nice book by uh, a gentleman by the name of Noam Chomsky, but you know what I really missed uh, in that book is uh, smiting and people lopping off uh, portions of their genitals. Uh, but boy, do I have a, a book recommendation for you that covers uh, both those things. And it is called the Old Testament. Um, but I don't remember. I don't remember ethnic cleansing of the Muslims being in there, or I'm sorry, the Arabs, as the Israelis call them, because you can't call them Palestinians or Muslims. You have to call them Arabs, uh, so you can tell them what country they should go back to, even though they're from fucking historic Palestine. Speaking of, the, uh, so what they're basing this annexation off of is that uh, there's there's a law saying that any Jewish person can claim any property that uh, that they may have owned or staked claim to prior to 1948, but Palestinians do not have the same rights. Again, that's a law of infiltration. That's from uh, last week's video that I threw out there. This is called the law of infiltration. Uh, it is a law that states that any uh, Palestinian refugee trying to get back home into into what has claimed Isra Israeli land uh, is to be shot on sight. So they literally have a law that calls refugees infiltrators, and then the law states that they can fucking murder them, and that's totally fine. So again, I don't remember that being one of the tenets of Judaism. Perhaps I'm wrong. I don't remember there being a law that says it's okay to murder refugees. Uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, that is the new prime minister uh, of Israel, has already come out and said that he wants to annex all of West Jerusalem. Um, and then basically stake claim to all of Jerusalem for for. Uh, for the Jews in Israel, right? Which then validates 
their argument that you know Israel belongs to the Jews, the entire land belongs to the Jews, and everybody else that's not a Jew is uh, an infiltrator that will be shot on sight. Uh, and it you know validates some ancient fucking decree that they have. And the evangelicals like this because if all the Jews go home to Israel, which is you know that's that's where that's where they need to go. That that'll trigger the second coming of Christ. So you know evangelicals are like, yay, yes, do this thing, and then we'll send all of the Jews into Israel. That's what they want. So, like, the fact that the Israel lobby and pro-Israel politicians uh, side with evangelicals that are also pro-Israel for a really weird fucking reason, their reason being uh, the apocalypse, uh, are also fine with this. But I do feel like, like, I don't know, is it just me or, or does it also feel like to you guys that we are in, like, some shitty end-of-the-world prophecy movie. Y you know, like, it, it's it's like Indiana Jones and the Star of David. Like, what the fuck? When I hear these sorts of things, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, you want the apocalypse to show up? Even then, even then, even if that is the case, that would still make the resistance the good guys. <laughs> Because we're not trying to fucking end the world, man. <laughs> the other the other part of this, too, is let's say the Palestinians are like, hey, we, we, we're cool with the one state solution. Let's just share this whole land and we'll call it something different. We'll meet in the middle, you know, and call it something different. And and this can be both our holy lands and we can both practice our faiths and our religions and, and our philosophies equally. And Jews are welcome here and Muslims are welcome here and this is kind of the shared land. That would still mean that all of the Jews can go to this historic Palestine region that would be called something different. And that would still satisfy the evangelicals fucking apocalypse wet dream. But, they, but instead of going down that route, where people are coexisting with each other, they go down the more callous route where they're like, what about bloodshed? Because you're, you're crazy. That's crazy. That's why I'm like, we're still, the, no matter how this shakes out, like the people that are against is Israel's fucking occupation of Palestine, their theocratic military occupation of Palestine, no matter how you shake it, they're the bad guys in this. There's no justification for them to be the good guys. There just isn't. And all of this, you know, the push for more annexation of, of uh, West Jerusalem and everything is coming after a ceasefire, uh, which means that they can't just arbitrarily fucking throw rockets and say, Hamas was there! I saw the glimmer of Hamas in that child's eye, so I had to throw the rockets at them. You know, they can't fucking do that. So they changed their tactics. And now if anybody resists in West Jerusalem, they can open fire and cancel the ceasefire and start fucking lobbing rockets at them. It's like if your sibling was like, your, your parents were like, hey, no fighting, stop fighting with each other. You know, don't touch each other. And they just go, not touching you, not touching you, not... And then you punch them in the face because that shit is also very annoying. And I'm speaking from experience on both sides of those aisles. <laughs> I have been this guy and I've been the fucking puncher. So, you know, and then the parents are like, well, the, you know, you started the, the fight. It's like, no. She did a thing to provoke. She provoked. I'm just, re I'm retaliating. She provoked. That's what Israel is doing. Israel is provoking Palestine to, to fight back, and they have a right to defend themselves. They're under a fucking occupation. Looking at your comments. Climate rebel. Uh, 
He says, if you look at early vids, he started his major political career as a as a major bootlicker to Wall Street. Uh, you're talking about Naftali Bennett. Uh, I'm I'm guessing you're talking about Naftali Bennett. Uh, or are you talking about Joey B's? Joey Biden. That's that's that sounds like Joey Biden to me. Uh, Book of Organization, the failure of representative government and the solution by the late great Senator Mike Gravel, uh, the last ever to save the whistleblower, uh, the the last to ever save a whistleblower from Julian's fate. And he fought uh, corruption to the end. He did. He did. Yes. Uh, that is actually on my book. It's a great recommendation. I have Citizen Power uh, as well. That's on my reading list. I am per I'm, I'm very bad at reading books. Um, I, it's, I think it's a concentration thing for me and I, and I have to get better at it. Uh, and thank you for clarifying the old Joey B's is, is who you're talking about being a bootlicker for wall street. hundred percent. Yes. That's pretty much how we started. Uh, but that is a book that I want to read. And I think, um, I think what I need to do is I need to isolate myself in a place where I'm not going to get distracted to read. I, which which honestly might be going to a bar like one like one or two hours out of the week and just sitting there and reading through a book, you know. Uh, but that is a fantastic recommendation for if you missed it. It's the failure of representative government and the solution by Senator Mike Gravel. Uh, he also has written a book called uh, Citizen Power uh, as well. Mike Gravel is just fantastic. Just go get his shit. Just go get all of the things Mike Gravel has ever written. It'll 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 it'll. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.